please make sure to register by visiting AbundantLifeCares.com. We've got an exciting couple weeks happening here at Abundant Life. This coming Wednesday is our Vacation Bible School, and so as a result, we will not be having our regular midweek service. Next Wednesday, July 27th, we will also not be having our regular midweek service, but we will be having our Great Lakes Youth Convention, and we encourage all those that are able to, to participate in that event with us. Good morning, Abundant Life Church. I wanna share with you an extraordinary opportunity for all of us in this assembly. I know many of you would like to uh, go be a part of a great conference that has some of the best speakers from all over the United States sharing powerful spiritual principles. Here's the opportunity. That is coming right to Fort Wayne, Indiana. At the end of this month, July 27th through 29th, we have the Great Lakes Youth Convention that's going to be happening right here. Now I wanna encourage all of us to be a part of this. During the morning sessions on Thursday and Friday, we have uh, Chris and Ken Dillingham that are gonna be teaching on how to be a disciple maker. After that, we're going to have Tyler and Tennille Whaley who are going to share with us some powerful principles about dealing with difficulties, challenges, and mental health issues. And then the evening services are gonna be powerful. Wednesday night, uh, Pastor Joel Urshan <clears throat> is gonna be speaking Thursday evening, Pastor Jason Huckabee, and on Friday, Pastor Lawami Diaz is gonna be here with us. It's $50 to register if you register within the next two weeks, and this gives you access to each and every session. And I know this is the Great Lakes Youth Convention, but with this quality of speakers and the topics that they're going to be discussing, this is going to be something that would benefit everyone from the youngest to the oldest at Abundant Life Church. So I'm encouraging you to sign up. Registration goes up to $60, after July the 18th. So let's do it this week. And uh, I know that you'll be blessed. I know that the young people are gonna be blessed and it's an opportunity for you to be a part of a conference with some of the greatest speakers in the United States right here in Abundant Life Church. I wanted to share with you a little bit about our Vacation Bible School coming up July 19th through the 22nd right here at Abundant Life Church. This great event is themed monumental looking at some different monuments in the United States and how they relate to our faith in that there are significant moments and events that happen in our life that solidify our faith. This event is for all children. And uh, if you have kids, make sure that they're registered for VBS. There's absolutely no cost to the children. And if you have grandkids or neighborhood children uh, that are connected with your family and their parents would be interested, let them know about this. This is a great opportunity to introduce new families and children to the power of Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. Thank you, Abundant Life Church, for your support of this during the coin drive. What a blessing that was. And now you can support this by helping us get as many kids as possible registered for this great vacation Bible school. If you're a guest with us today, we're so glad you joined us. We know you had a choice on where you were going to spend today, and we're thankful that you chose to worship with us. So we invite you to fill out that guest connection card in the seat next to you. Feel free to put as much information as you're comfortable sharing. And then if this is your first time with us, make sure to bring it with you to the front foyer after service to meet our pastor and his wife. And they have a special gift they'd like to give you for joining with us today. If you're a member of Abundant Life, make sure to use that connection card today to let us know of any prayer requests or if you'd like to meet with the pastoral team or if you have other, any other needs or comments that you want to make us aware of. We want to remind you of the various ways you can give financially here to the work of God at Abundant Life Church. You can give using cash or check using the offering envelope that is available in your seat. You can also give digitally going online at AbundantLifeCares.com or texting any dollar amount to the number 84321. It's very safe and secure and we're very appreciative and thankful for your financial contributions to the work of God here at Abundant Life Church. Lastly, we want to stay connected with you. So follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and never miss out on what's happening here at Abundant Life Church. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us today. God bless.
Praise the Lord, abundant life. Can we stand to our feet today? How many know it's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on, why don't you think about it for just a moment? There's people all over the world who are hiding out, meeting in dark rooms with candles, hiding underground, studying the Bible together today. But we are free to magnify Jesus, to lift our voice as loud as we want and proclaim Him today. Come on, can we do that for just a moment? God, we invite you into this house today. We know that you're a gentleman. You won't force your way in. But we know that you abide in the praises of your people. So right now we lift our voice. Come on, church, lift your voice. We lift our worship. We create a habitation for you to dwell in today, Jesus. Come on, are you ready to worship him today? Has he been good to you today?
We see that you are able. Oh God, release your favor. We believe in you, Lord. Today, praise him in advance of the miracle. Praise him like he's already done it. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want every hand of lifted in this place right now. Aren't you glad you serve a faithful father? In the day and the time that we're living in, I'm so glad that my hope is in him today. I'm so glad that I've built on the firm foundation. Amen. Come on, you're not alone today. Jesus is here to minister in this house.
time of need. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Help me say, who are you, great mouth? But you should not. You should not bow low. you just lift your hands if you see someone standing next to you with their hands have lifted why don't you place a hand on their shoulder the Bible says we're two or three agree together come on that's it you don't need the whole church praying for you all you need is someone to come into agreement with you today Let the body minister right now. Let the body minister to each other. Come on, let the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate today. Give someone a word of encouragement. Give someone a word of hope. just the prayers of the people of God. Lift your voice right now. The atmosphere changes when we begin to lift our voice. Come on, that's it. Are there any intercessors in the house today? The Holy Ghost is saying, you've been trying to do it on your own. You've been trying to do it in your own power but I am your help. I am your strength. Come on, you don't have to figure it out on your own. Jesus is going to give you wisdom in the house today. He's going to bring healing. He's restoring right now. Come on, that's it. Let's not get in a hurry. Let's wait on him. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. I come against every spirit of the enemy that would weigh down the people of God. 
every spirit of oppression, we come against it in the name of Jesus. I loose the Holy Ghost over every mind, over every spirit, over every emotion in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's freedom. Lift your hands in his presence. There is rest in his presence. There is peace in his presence. like a heavenly visitation is entered into this sanctuary right now. Come on, enter in. The Spirit is calling for you to enter in today. Another minute, can we wait on him? Surely the breath of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. Of angels' wings, 
Just lift your hands up like a funnel and receive it. Come on, there's angels in this house today. Come on, somebody lift your voice. We're almost done. Lift your voice. Lift your voice and pray in the Spirit. Come on, church. Come on, lift your voice right now. Lift your voice. Come on, fear cannot stay. Depression cannot stay. Discouragement, weariness cannot stay. When the Holy Ghost comes in, Come on, that's it. Lift your voice and pray in the Spirit. Every person praying in the Spirit right now. Come on, lift your voice. Cry aloud. Yes, 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 Jesus is here. His presence is here. His healing power is here right now. His anointing is here. Come on, let it out. Let it out. Everything that's built up inside of you, let go of it and release it in the Holy Ghost today. Woo! That's it. That's it. Release it right now. I command oppression to go. I command sickness to go. I command weariness to go. I command every spirit that's not of you, Jesus, to leave this house right now. Come on, that sin, Jesus is in this place. Come on, he's ministering in this place. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your worship. Lift your praise to him. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together and praise Him for deliverance. Praise Him for miracles. Praise Him for restoration. standing for quite some time. If you'd like to be seated, feel free to. I don't want to interrupt what God's doing. We're just going to take about 10 seconds here, and I want you to close your eyes, whether you're sitting or standing. Lift your hands, and I just want you to thank Him for His goodness. Jesus, you are good. Your mercy endureth forever. Your loving kindness leads me to a place of surrender and repentance. You are a faithful Father. You see my burdens and my struggles. And I'm so grateful that you, you are the God that sees and hears. Thank you for being with us today and for ministering to your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Why don't you high-five your neighbor and say, it's so good to have you with us today. And for all of our guests that are joining with us today, thank you so much for worshiping with us. Let's give our guests a round of applause for joining with us this afternoon. Excuse me, this morning. We know you had a choice on where you were going to spend your Sunday morning. And whether it's because you were uh, strongly persuaded, bribed, coerced, or maybe God just spoke to you and you decided to be here. It was not by accident. 
God has something for you. You're here in this atmosphere because God wants to do something in your life today. And we at Abundant Life believe that God will do that. If you would open up your heart to Him, He'll do it. And we want to partner with you. We want to join with you. We want to link up with you and help you walk in that path that God has for you, discovering everything that God has for you and your family, the blessings of living that abundant life through Him. And one of the best ways that you can get connected to what's happening here at Abundant Life and for us to get connected with you and help you and your family is by filling out that connection card. You'll see it in the seat here in the pew next to you, and we encourage all of our guests, whether this is your first time with us, or maybe it's second, third, fourth, fifth time, but you haven't yet filled out that card, we encourage you to fill out that card, as much information as you're comfortable sharing, and hang on to it, and then bring it with you after the service today into the front foyer to meet our pastor and his wife, Pastor and Sister Brown, and we're going to exchange your uh, connection card for a gift just to say thank you for being with us today. We are so grateful that you're here, and we want to make sure that we show that appreciation to you and let you know that we really would love to see you join back with us again next week and walk with us and help us partner with you to see that God do everything in your life that He desires to do. Can I get a witness? Abundant life. Amen. And so while we're here, I want to make mention of a few things. I'm going to try to be as brief as I can, but we've got several things that are coming down the pipeline here at Abundant Life. So hang with me just for a few seconds while I, I talk to you all about some exciting things that are happening. First off, this coming week is our Vacation Bible School. The theme is Monumental. And it's all about how God is so much bigger than our struggles and all that we go through. And that when we lean into His strength and His greatness, He's going to be there for us. And your kids are going to have an incredible time this week at Vacation Bible School. So make sure to stop out into the VBS table after service. Get your kid registered. You can also go online to AbundantLifeCares.com slash events and register there as well. We'd love to see your children participate in that this week. Now, we have been announcing that we are not having regular midweek programming this week. Pastor will mention more of this uh, here momentarily, but we're going to shift things up a little bit. Now, we're not doing a normal midweek service, but we are going to have an opportunity for those that would love to join us and for parents that have dropped off their kids at 7 o'clock up in the International Chapel. Brother Reed Kurtz is going to be speaking, and it's a voice that we are very familiar with. And so we'd love to have as many of you can join us uh, up in the International Chapel, uh, which is upstairs to my my right and your left um, at 2.51 and this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. Okay? Now, just to keep going here, we also have Great Lakes Youth Convention happening the week right after. It's just a power-packed couple weeks here at Abundant Life. All right? And if you haven't noticed... I don't know if you've noticed or not, but there's a theme here. Next week, it's all about the kids, and the week after, it's all about the teenagers and young adults. God's going to do something in this next generation over these next two weeks. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost just talking about it. I know this is supposed to be announcements and boring, but I get excited when I think about opportunities for God to impact the next generation so that they can become everything that God has purposed and created them to be. And so if you are a parent that is in this place here tonight, and you have a, a middle schooler, a high schooler, you've got a young adult that still lives with you. If they're in your house, they buy by your rules. You tell them to go to Great Lakes Youth Convention. <laughs> All the 20-year-olds are like, hey, 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 chill. I'm kidding. Okay, not really. You should bring them. All right? And young people, you want to be here. You want to be here. You are going to be ministered to. God is going to transform your life. He's going to equip you. He's going to encourage you right before you get into your school system this coming August. God is going to do something powerful, and you're going to want to be right in the middle of it. So make sure you register. Early registration ends tomorrow. It's $50 through tomorrow. After tomorrow, it goes to $60. So make sure to register tonight. All right. Now, ushers, you can come on down here. I've got a few things that I'm going to mention here, and then we're going to bring the kids down. If you'd like to give today, on the screen behind me are three ways you can give. You can give via the envelope and the seat with you. You can go online to Abundant Life Cares, or you can text any dollar amount to the number 84321, and you can designate where it goes by just putting the fund after that dollar amount. So $100, tithe, $50, offering, whatever it is. 
or, you know, $1,000 to the forward campaign. Amen. And then we can continue here with uh, letting you know that you can stay connected to what's happening at Abundant Life by following, uh, by signing up for our weekly newsletter that goes out via email and following our social media, media pages on Instagram and Facebook. So I know it's been a lot. There's been a lot happening. And then this coming Sunday, oh, here's another announcement. We've got Brother Lassiter joining us for revival this coming Sunday. Now, many of you probably remember him from several uh, months ago. He was here and ministered and did a phenomenal job. Okay, Brother Eric Lassiter is going to be here, and we're going to have a powerful time in God's presence. So bring someone, invite someone to join you. God's going to do incredible things this coming Sunday. All right, kids, come on down here. Let's give it up for our kids. God's got some great things in store for them today in their programming. And so we're going to pray here today. Thank you, Memphis. Um, we're going to pray here today for the offering. We're going to pray that God would bless them and their time together and do great works. And right here before we do, uh, Peyton, come up here. Peyton, come up here, sweetie. We announced this Wednesday night. Peyton, did something really awesome happen at camp this week? Tell us what happened. I got the Holy Ghost. Now, hang on a second. Aubrey, did something happen for you this week? I got the Holy Ghost. Aubrey's going to be baptized in Jesus' name after service today. God's going to have revival in this generation. We're excited for them. So as it comes around next year, make sure to get your kids involved in camp. These two lovely ladies received the Holy Ghost at camp last week. It was a powerful time. And we've had young people and children get the Holy Ghost at VBS. So make sure your kids are involved. It could be that they get the Holy Ghost at VBS next week. Amen. Let's pray together. Go ahead, guys. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch these kids as they head out to their programming today. God, bless them. Speak into their hearts. Bless this offering today, dear Jesus. Multiply it. God, use it for your glory to minister to those in this community, to help grow your church, God, to impact this community and the world. And we give you glory and honor, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give and worship to the Lord today. Before we go into our song, I just feel to share this. I want to give a little testimony. Uh, about three weeks ago, we had our family camp up in uh, the Indiana District family camp, and I know most of you were not able to attend that camp meeting, but I'm telling you some powerful things happened at that camp, and some powerful things happened in our family. I'm telling you, there was such a prophetic voice that went out. Some words of prophecy were spoken over our family for this season and the ministry was so in tune with what was going on in our world right now, giving clear direction and teaching the church how to respond. And I thought, my goodness, I wish our church could have been here for this. But I just feel to tell you that we're going to have the same thing, not this week, but next week at Great Lakes Conference. And I don't want to stand on this stage after that conference and say, I wish our church could have been a part of that. There's going to be some incredible voices speaking at this conference. Powerful, prophetic words are going to go forth. And I'm just telling you, I would do everything I can to be in this house. Whether you're a youth or not, I would be here because God is going to break some things in the spirit. God's going to speak some words over lives. And I know the registration, I think, is $50 for the whole week, which is super cheap. $15 if you just come to a service. But if you're able if, to give, if you could just go ahead and pay the $50 to help with the expenses and come to as many services as you can, I promise you God's going to do some incredible things. And it's right here, right here at Abundant Life. Maybe this is the voice of Mommy speaking over the church, but... Especially if you have young people. I'm just going to say it. You come to us. I'm struggling with my kids. My kids are caught up in this. My kid. Are you going to make sure they're at this conference? 
because God is going to break some things over families and teenagers. Everywhere your kids are going, I know, social media, lies of the enemy. Starbucks, lies of the enemy. School, lies of the enemy. I'm telling you, we're in all-out war for our families. And truth is going to be proclaimed right here in this place. I want truth to get in the hearts of my family. I want the word to keep them during these times. Our Father, come on, raise your hands. All of heaven rules your name. Sing loud. Let this place, let this place erupt. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? The sound. The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. feel his presence here right now don't be afraid just to let it be known Jesus I'm trusting you Lord I'm believing that you're working in that situation Lord God that you're making a way in the impossibility Lord Jesus you're a mighty God you're worthy of praise hallelujah why don't you just let that praise come out of your spirit for a moment Woo, it feels good man 
We couldn't do too much of this. Let's just praise him right now. He's worthy to receive glory and honor. He's worthy to be lifted up and magnified. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we magnify you, Lord God. We glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to move directly into the word of the Lord. Mark chapter 5, verse 24. I want to mention it's a, a great blessing to have Brother Reed and Sister Tina Kurtz with us, visiting all the way from California. And he was on staff here at Abundant Life Church for many years. And uh, we're excited to have them. And he's going to be teaching on uh, Wednesday night, as he mentioned, up in the International Chapel. So I encourage you to come out and be a part of that. And uh, I failed. I didn't realize that, uh, um, that this is the first time many of you have met Reed's bride, Tina. And uh, so we're so excited for um, uh, the opportunity to meet her. Here's the interesting thing. They were married about, what, three years ago? Three years ago. And uh, they went on their first date when they were teenagers. So it took a little while for them to get together, didn't it? But we're so excited for them and what um, the Lord has, is doing in their life and how God's using them in this season. We're glad to have them with us. They're our family as well. <clears throat> and um, we're praying this week, um, Jeremy, for Jeremy Patton lost a brother. or it's, He's uh, right uh, having his organs donated right now. And so we're praying for that family and then the Kiahi family. Uh, said goodbye to their mother this week, and so we're praying for them. Amen. Thank God for His goodness, and thank God for His comfort in time of need. Mark chapter 5, verse 24, we hasten. Uh, verse 24 says, And Jesus went with him, speaking of uh, Jairus, and uh, much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Notice when Jesus said in verse 30, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said, There's a whole multitude thronging you. Why are you saying, Who touched me? The other... Um, rendering of this uh, story says that Jesus sensed that virtue had come out of him, that miracle power had been released from him. So today, I want to preach what I feel in my spirit. I don't know how good it's going to be because I sent my message to my email and I tried to pull it up and it actually went to the spam email, so I don't know what it's going to be like today. But today, I want to just share with you what's on my heart, and, and the sermon title is simply this, How to Have a Solo Revival, How to Have a Solo Revival, just one person, how you can have, right in the middle of everybody else who's just doing their thing, but there's a solo revival, amen, let's pray and ask God to speak to us today, Lord, in the next few moments we pray in this house that you administer to the needs of those here. Lord, we're praying, God, for people who need a miracle, who need a touch, who need deliverance, who need to be transformed through 
the power of the gospel through the power of the blood of the lamb people who need to repent and turn to you and seek your power to overcome the power of the enemy and i pray in jesus name right now lord god i pray in jesus name that your will would be done in the next few moments in this service uh, that lives can be impacted jesus and transformed in the name of the lord we pray hallelujah if you believe god's already working and moving in his house just put your hands together and praise to him He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. And you may be seated. We all understand the term revival, even though that word is not used in Scripture to describe a spiritual awakening. The word revive is used to describe someone who was dead and came back to life. The word revival and its Latin roots, the word re, the part of it re, simply means again. And uh, viver means to live. So revive means to live again. So when we talk about revival, we're talking about sometimes it refers to a renewed attention or interest in something that someone had lost interest in. Or sometimes it's a new publication or a new presentation of something that was old and has been forgotten, but it emerges again. And Often when we refer to revival, we're talking about a period of spiritual, renewed religious interest and, and uh, spiritual fervor. And uh, revival could also mean a restoration of force, validity, or effect. In other words, if a contract has gone out of effect and you revive that contract, it brings its force or validity back into effect. And in Scripture, we see where the Bible says that the little baby that uh, Elijah brought back to life, the child revived. The Bible says of Jesus, when he came out of the tomb, he was resurrected and revived. One place, the Apostle Paul said sin used to be dead, but sin revived. So to revive means to bring back to life, uh, to bring back to power, and to bring back to significance. Uh, and when we talk about revival in a spirit-filled, Pentecostal, apostolic context, uh, we're talking about something that changes in the atmosphere, where faith that has been on the decline comes back to life, uh, where God shows up and begins to change the environment, uh, the atmosphere, and various situations. Uh, when revival begins to happen, people are changed. Uh, there were old, ancient, old-fashioned revivals that happened historically that would come into a city and a community, and at the end of the revival, the bars were shut down. The places where prostitutes worked were shut down. People who were living together got married. People stopped smoking and drinking. People repented of their sins, and people stopped sinning. Revival included powerful services. Uh, often Oftentimes, multiple people were baptized, uh, and many people were filled with the Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. I just want to uh, an announce today real quickly, uh, is Thomas and Tish here? Or were they here? They were here. Hey, Thomas and Tish, stand up right now. Uh, we want to uh, recognize a brand new married couple. They got married yesterday here at Abundant Life Church. Amen. And they'll... Later, have a, a, a public ceremony uh, for all of us to celebrate together. But uh, this is what revival looks like. Uh, when God begins to transform people and doesn't just uh, give them the Holy Ghost, but begins to work in their heart and say, we got to get things right. Uh, we got to get in the right spot before God. And I want to tell you that when revival comes, uh, it's not just emotionalism, it's not just feelings, uh, but it's when people begin to repent uh, and turn away from their lives of sin and turn away from selfishness uh, and turn away from the things that are seeking to destroy them and begin to pursue after the righteousness of God. Real revival. Real revival is always accompanied by a spirit of repentance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think of examples of uh, seasons of revival. You have your own stories, no doubt, of times where the power of God begins to move. It seems like the water begins to flow again. 
seems like the anointing just begins to manifest among God's people, and it's exciting. And sometimes you see as it begins to trickle one by one, one person receives the Holy Ghost, another person repents, uh, another person who's hardened to God begins to turn to God one by one, and then sometimes you see entire families uh, begin to be transformed and come into the presence of the Lord. I I remember some powerful revival times uh, when I was a young man and began preaching revivals. Uh, I was in uh, a particular church in uh, Canada across the border, and uh, we'd been preaching for a few days, and there was very little breakthrough. Uh, Couldn't seem to get anybody to really break through. It was a church that had become locked in tradition. It was kind of going the wrong direction, to be honest. Uh, But in the middle of that revival, I'll never forget this moment, uh, because right in the middle, while we were preaching the word of the Lord and we felt the anointing, and right in the middle, in in the middle of a dead church where there hadn't been much moving, right in the middle of that sermon, a word went forth and somebody lifted up their hands and began to cry out to God and began to speak in tongues. And right there in the middle of that building within a matter of three to five minutes, there were seven other people that were filled with the Holy Ghost all across that building. And it's not because of what some person did or some strategy or some uh, uh, effect or whatever. It's just the power of revival. When God begins to move sovereignly, when the Spirit of the Lord begins to show up, uh, and when lives begin to be changed. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget, Kim, when you said, I I need to be baptized in Jesus' name, right in the middle of that service while Brother Lewis was preaching. And so she and her mother went out that door, and next thing I know, she had fallen on her knees right in the hallway and hands lifted up and was speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave her the utterance. That's the power of revival. And I want to tell you that the God who poured out His Spirit in the 50s and in the 70s and in the 90s and in the early 2000s is the same God that's working on hearts and minds and lives today. And He's looking for people who are hungry. He's looking for a group of people that have faith, that believe that God can pour out His Spirit, transform individuals, transform families, go beyond that, transform neighborhoods, transform schools, and transform cities through the power of revival. Is there anybody that believes that God's still able, He's still working, He's still doing it. Amen. I remember I was asked to teach a a home Bible study, um, uh, not a home Bible study, but a Bible study that uses search for truth chart and uh, was teaching in a Korean university in Los Angeles. And uh, there were a number of students that were actually from Korea that were in Los Angeles studying at this school. And they asked me to teach and uh, We were teaching about the Passover and the power of the blood applied to the doorposts and uh, how that uh, it's not enough that Jesus, our lamb, died on the cross, but that his blood has to be applied to our life. And I talked about the application of blood through repentance, turning away from sin and turning towards the Lord. And the fact that the blood flows as we're baptized into Christ's death and into his burial in Jesus' name. And the fact that the blood flows while people are re- receive the baptism of the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And these Presbyterian Korean young people, I said, let's just pray for a little bit right now. And we begin to pray because the anointing of God to come into that room, and I'll never forget one of the young ladies, uh, as uh, uh, she just began to pray, she fell backwards and began to speak in other tongues, uh, and then the next thing you know, there was another one speaking in tongues, uh, and then there was another one who had no background in it, but was speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Uh, I want to tell you today, the power of the Holy Ghost is real. Amen. It works. Uh, It transforms people. It's a promise from God. It's for you. It's for your children. It's for those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And I promise you, this is a guarantee that here in the end of mid of July of 2022, God's still pouring His Spirit out to those that believe the Word of God, to those that say, if it's available, I want it. It's for me. I can receive it. God's still waking people up. God's still bringing things that are dead back to life again, backslidden people, lost people, people who are far from God. The Lord is still working. Come on, somebody. If you feel the power of the promises of God and the Word of God in your spirit and the power of revival, just begin to praise Him like you know He's working right now. Hallelujah. 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 I heard the story one time of uh, Brother Reed and Sister Sister Keller's mother told a story, Sister Kurtz, 
about a family member up around Bourbon or Warsaw years and years ago, little girl. How many are excited about these little girls receiving the Holy Ghost this week? Isn't that amazing? Here's the fascinating part. One year ago, ago today, neither one of their families were even in an apostolic church. Come on, that's revival. That's revival. Mike, stand up for a minute. This is Mike. I want to introduce you. Mike, give me a high five. This is a great guy, and he has a heart for young people and children. He's the one who does the ministry to the trailer park downtown. Uh, many of you have been a part of it, and he called me on Monday. He said, I need a pastor, and I need a church home, and I feel like this is my family. So I want you to warmly welcome him in, because God's going to use him, amen, in these coming weeks. I believe that. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's a story in the middle of a story, right? Got to get back to what I was saying. Sister Kurtz told the story of a young person uh, in their family back uh, years ago who had had a botched surgery and as a result of the surgery the strength the muscle tone in the leg had gone away and the leg had drawn up like this to where the heel was against the backside of this little child and uh, they were in a revival meeting a revival service and uh, in that uh, <clears throat> particular revival service this young lady wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, so she told her parents, her mother, hey, I want to pray to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She said, okay. So in that service, they were praying. There was a good move of God. She was praying. And then uh, she continued to pray in the altar. And there were a couple ladies of faith that continued to pray with her. And then everybody began to trickle out. They had work in the morning until uh, finally the parents were waiting at the back. And one of the ladies praying said, she, she just wants to continue praying. I'll bring her home. Uh, when she's done and so the parents left and they began to continue to pray and continue to pray and the power of God was moving just the three or four of them and they continued to pray and all of a sudden the power of God hit this young girl and she began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave her the utterance and as those words began to came up, come out of her mouth her leg went down to the ground and she began to walk on her two legs and she walked into come on now she walked into her house said, Mom, I got the Holy Ghost. And Mom was rejoicing and said, that's not the only thing that happened. But I want to promise you today that God is a miracle working God. Whatever situation seems impossible to you, when God begins to move, it's no longer impossible. The impossible becomes possible. And we serve a God who can touch, who can heal, who can take impossible, broken, torn situations and turn them back to, uh, uh, together again, put them back together again. That's the power of revival. Put your hands together and clap if you want to see God bring revival into your family. And I'm excited and hungry for revival to continue here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, because our city needs revival. As I walk through this community, I, I lived in Los Angeles, like you know, for 17 years. So, but I, I hate to share this with you. But as I walk into the coffee shops and into the community areas where young people congregate, uh, I see that there is tremendous spiritual oppression, that there is confusion that's speaking to the minds of young people and getting them twisted up uh, and causing them to be frustrated, angry, suicidal, sexually confused. Uh, all of this is a spiritual thing. And I'm telling you right now, there needs to be a church that believes in the power of God and the power of prayer and the power of revival. Not Come on now. Not just to change one life after another, but to push back the power and the force of doctrine, uh, uh, of darkness in this community and in this region. And I wonder if there's some people right now that believe that when there are a group of believers that join together, and when the fire begins to burn, and when the Spirit of God begins to manifest, it pushes back the darkness. Come on, we need revival. Revival is not an optional thing. There are too many young people's lives are being destroyed by addiction, being destroyed uh, by, by frustration and mental health issues. Uh, we serve a God who is able. We serve a God who's powerful. We serve a God who is above it all. And the revival power, when it begins to move, there's nothing. Woo! Woo! Come on, somebody. Nothing can stop the moving power, the presence of God. 
Come on, I know there's some believers in here. I know there's some people here that know we're talking about something real, something that's going to transform lives and families. Today I want to narrow the focus a little bit because oftentimes when we think of revival, we know it usually includes group dynamics. For example, in Scripture, when Jonah preached to Nineveh, the whole city put on sackcloth and ashes and went on a fast. It was an entire city revival that repented. When Jesus went about teaching, the Bible said that multitudes would follow him, and there were multiple healings, too many to even record. Even the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit was poured out, it was poured out at one moment on 120 people, and then before the day was finished, the Bible says that there were 3,000 who were added to the church. Uh, it was very clear in these instances that something divine, something sovereign, something powerful, something supernaturally was happening. And in many of these cases, you see, for instance, the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it was the fullness of time, it was ripe, it was ready, it was already on God's agenda and had been on God's agenda from the very beginning. It was divinely scheduled and it was corporate for all the body of Christ. But today I want to talk about a solo revival. And I see two examples in scripture among many others that we could use, but two examples I want to draw your attention to of solo revivals. The first one is an unnamed figure in scripture. We simply know her as the woman with the issue of blood who for 12 years had continually been bleeding, leading to no doubt anemia, fatigue, all kinds of issues in her life, not to mention great frustration. She'd gone to all these different physicians, none of them worked, and she ended up spending all her money. And with each treatment, each uh, prescription, each offering of direction, instead of getting better, she ended up getting worse. This is the first example. The second example is a man in Scripture who we do have his name. The reason I think we have his name is because the Bible says that he followed Jesus in the way after his miracle. So he was no doubt part of the New Testament church. Uh, his name is Bartimaeus, uh, the son of Timaeus. These are two examples. And what, why would I call them solo revivals? Well, first of all, they're individualized stories. Uh, but both of these individuals, when you look at their story, neither one of them were on Jesus' agenda for the day. In fact, both of them actually interrupted Jesus' agenda. In both cases, the woman with the issue of blood... Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, in both cases, Jesus was on his way somewhere else for something very important. And they interrupted. The woman with the issue of blood, first of all, we'll deal with her. Jesus was on his way to pray for Jairus' daughter. She was very sick. She was right at the point of death. It was a big appointment because Jairus was a high-ranking leader of the synagogue. A man with influence, uh, a man who a lot of people listened to, a man who could spread the message far and wide. The daughter was at the point of death. Jairus was there. It was a hurry up, hurry up, let's get there. She's very sick type of moment. In fact, his daughter died during the woman with the issue of blood's interruption. Look at the Bible scripture, you'll discover. During this interruption, she passes, passes away. So here's Jesus in a hurry with Jairus. She's very sick on the way. And the crowd that followed Jesus, the multitude who were intrigued by the miracles and the supernatural events are pushing and thronging. And all of a sudden there was a woman, this woman that we described, who had a physical ailment for many years and was growing worse, who saw Jesus. And when she saw him, she had heard about him. And she said in her mouth, she said to herself in one instance, in other words, in this one it just says she said, if I can but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And she began to push through the crowd that was thronging Jesus as Jesus is on his way, head down, moving towards the appointment. She pushes her way through. And as she pushes through, she reaches out. 
and she touches the hem of his garment. Now, we think, oh, that's natural, the hem of Jesus' garments. But that's because we grew up listening to songs. Uh, A woman tried many physicians, and touching Jesus is all that matters. But they didn't know that. There was no precedent for this at this point. She said in herself, there's something about this guy, and I believe that if I, I know, in fact, I know that if I can just touch his clothes, uh, I shall be made whole. And she pushed her way through the crowd, and when she touched his garment, immediately the blood stopped flowing. Immediately she was healed. I'm talking about the power of God. God can work in a second, in a moment. It's the miraculous power of God. I know sometimes healings are progressive, but miracles happen right here and right now. And in that moment, the blood in her body dried up. And Bronson just shared with me before service, uh, or while service was going on, he said, I believe God's here to heal somebody physically tonight, today. That God can heal somebody's body physically. And I want somebody to receive in faith right now, whether you've been having an issue with your back, uh, whether you've had organ issues, kidneys, whatever it is uh, that you've been struggling with. uh, If you could have the faith of this lady that says, if I can but touch uh, the hem of his garment, uh, I shall be made whole. You may think, well, I could say that if this just started hurting this week, but it's been months. In fact, it's been years. Uh, If anybody had a right to be negative, it was this lady because she had been 12 years with the same issue, gone to many physicians, and none of them worked. Uh, If anybody had a right to say, well, this ain't going to work. This is not going to work. I'm pretty sure this is going to be another failure. It'd be her. But something triggered in her, and she said, if I can touch his clothes, uh, I shall be made whole. And I wonder if there's somebody who in your spirit right now, in spite of all the negativity, in spite of the pain, in spite of the frustration if you can declare in yourself that if I can touch him and she didn't just mouth it she believed it that's what pushed her through that's what drove her through the crowd that desperation that said if I can touch his clothes I shall be made whole Proverbs 18 21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. There's power in your words for good or for bad. And every day you're going to get what you say. Our mouths become self-fulfilling prophecies. And I speak to you as one who, uh, from observation, genetically, family tree, all of that, I have a tendency to speak negative. At times my wife has to check and correct me. Thank God for a wife that will speak truth to your life. Uh, But negative thoughts and negative words will keep you defeated. And you and I, as Christians who are involved in spiritual warfare, as a part of a last day church and a last day revival, we have to be careful how we think and especially careful about what we say because we give life to what we're saying, either good or bad. She said, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. I I know what it's me, I know what it's like to get in a negative frame of mind and start saying things like nothing good ever happens to me. I'll never be successful. I just don't have what it takes, uh, and I'll never get out of this mess. Uh, But let me tell you, when you speak negative words, your words are paving the way for your failure. But if anybody had a right to be negative, it was this woman. But she declared in herself, uh, I believe something's getting ready to change. I believe something's getting ready to be transformed. I believe that if I can touch uh, the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Doesn't matter I've been dealing with this 12 years. Doesn't matter I'm already out of money because I spent everything. I know if I can touch him. I shall. See, our problem is we allow our circumstances to dictate our speech. If you want to have a a solo revival, you got to quit letting your circumstances dictate your speech. You got to quit letting the environment around you dictate what you think, what you believe, and what you declare. Somewhere along the way, you got to turn the tables. We talked Wednesday night about the the fact that the Lord can turn it. Sometimes we got to do some turning. Instead of letting our circumstances dictate our speech, uh, what would happen if, like this woman, we said, I'm going to let my speech dictate my circumstances? That is, uh, I need a healing, and I believe that if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. If I can make it to the prayer room this week, uh, if I can get in the presence of the Lord, if I can push my way into the presence of Jesus, uh, I shall be made whole. Come on now. Hallelujah. Mark 11, 22 says this, Jesus Answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall say unto this mountain, 
uh, whosoever shall say, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. Hey, I'm quoting Jesus right now. Y'all with me? Whatever, if he believes those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. This lady understood that. I don't know if she heard Jesus say that or not. But she said in herself, if I can touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And she said it with faith. And when she declared it with her mouth, with faith, it happened. Somebody believe with me right now. So Jesus says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. When you have faith, you can speak. You can speak to a mountain, impossible situation. You know, you can talk yourself out of a miracle, but by faith you can talk yourself into a miracle. And somebody needs to speak faith right now. Somebody needs to declare, God's working in my child's life right now. Come on, just say it. You don't have to say it out loud, but say it in yourself. Uh, God's doing a miracle in that physical situation in my body right now. God's turning the tide. God's working a financial miracle right now. Come on, somebody. I want you to speak it right now. I want you to declare it, uh, and I want you to believe it because there is power in your mouth when you believe in the power of God and the promises and the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you want to have a solo revival, you need to speak the word of faith. And finally, Bartimaeus' case. Once again, just like this, this lady, she was not the featured event. But somehow her faith said, we're going to have revival right here, right now. I know it's not healing line time. I know they haven't called for prayer requests. I know Jesus hasn't paused to pray for people. He's pretty busy. He's on his way. I don't have time to get his attention for him to talk to me. But if I can touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. She pushed through and she did it. Solo revival. In Bartimaeus' case, Jesus was leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. And on the outskirts of Jericho, he was on his way for something very important. Well, what was very important? Well, Jesus, when he showed up in Jerusalem, he asked him to get a donkey. And he took the donkey and he came into the city. This was Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, the beginning of the passion of Christ. So you talk about something that's important on Jesus' schedule. Uh, next week, uh, what do I got going? Oh, yeah, I got to die for the sins of humanity. I got to redeem all people. I've got to suffer and die on a cross. I got to be humiliated, stripped, mocked, beaten, right to the point of death, and then nailed to a cross. But my redemption, my, uh, my, uh, my uh, resurrection is going to bring redemption to all people. Well, that's on my calendar. And so he's leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. Maybe it's Saturday afternoon. I don't know. But the next thing we know, it's, it's Sunday, and they've got the donkey, and they're getting ready to go out. And so on the way there, they're leaving, and somebody lifts up their voice and begins to shout out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Well, he wasn't on the schedule. It was not healing line time. He hadn't said, come forward if you want to be touched. Jesus is on his way somewhere. See, the thing is, if you want to have a solo revival, sometimes you've got to interrupt what's going on. <laughs> Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And as he lifted up his voice, as he cried out, come on, brother, tell me what you got. I couldn't even walk in here. I wasn't going to come to church because I, my kidney and my back hurt so bad. I stepped outside to make sure it was still hurting, but it's not hurt. It's been hurting for years, but it got really bad. I couldn't even get out of bed. Come on, come on, let's get this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, this is a man of faith right here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to believe right now. Lift up your hands and call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit down just for a moment. I, I want to get right here where I'm going. This is where I'm, we're, we're going to wrap this up. His name was Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. You know what that actually means if you translate it? His name was son of Timaeus, the son of Timaeus. That's exactly what it means, Bar Timaeus. 
son of Timaeus. His name was Bartimaeus. His name was the son of Timaeus, the son of Timaeus. You say, well, why, did, why, why is the repetitiveness there? His name actually means I'm the son of Timaeus. And many people believe it was because to the Hebrews that were there that day, the word Bartimaeus meant something completely different than the Greeks. Who were the Greeks? The Greeks were the unbelievers, the outsiders, the heathens. The Hebrews were the people of covenant. And when the Greeks heard the name Bartimaeus in the Greek, Bartimaeus meant the son of a person who's important or the son of honor. But when the Hebrews heard the word Bartimaeus, this is hard to believe, but look it up. I'm telling the truth. I'm speaking truth right now. When the Hebrews heard the word Bartimaeus, what they heard was the son of uncleanness. The son of honor, the son of respect from the perspective of the Greeks. As a Hebrew, Bartimaeus meant the son of uncleanness. Let me tell you right now. And then, and then I noticed this. It says that Bartimaeus sat begging. Let me, let me read this to you right now because I want to get this straight. The word that's translated to beg simply means this. The word begging is aitio. It means a weaker person asking a stronger person certain permissions or to intervene in a situation that's gotten out of the weaker person's control. That's what Bartimaeus was doing by the roadside. It may describe a needy person's asking for something that belongs to somebody who's wealthier. And so he's begging. In the meantime, all these people around are not used to exposing their weakness. They spend their time trying to posture that everything's okay. That's what the son of honor and respect would declare. And sometimes when we come into the house of the Lord, we want to look like and act like and seem like we have it all together. But when the spirit of the Lord begins to move, when conviction begins to move, when covenant power begins to call you, you say, you re recognize as I get close to the holiness of the Lord, I realize I'm lost and I'm undone and I'm an unclean person and I'm not going to sit here and act like I got everything okay. I'm a weaker person. I'm a needy person. I'm broken. I'm struggling. I'm sick. I'm financially beat down. I'm struggling. My, mar my marriage is about to fall apart. But what do the Greeks do? They sit there, oh, everything's cool for me. Bartimaeus had a different frame of mind because he spent his life not being afraid to act as the weaker person, asking the stronger person, can you help me out? Our problem, sometimes we can't have a solo revival because we're posturing at our strength. We're posturing from our position of having it all together and not really needing a miracle from God. That's why you walk in church and you leave church the same way. That's why you're still struggling five years later with what you've been struggling with five years before. Because instead of coming into the presence of Jesus and saying, I'm broken and I'm unclean, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. We're like the rest of the crowd. Hold it together, buddy. Hold your peace. If it's time for miracles, he'll call you. Just sit back and hold your peace. Don't you know you're making a nuisance of yourself? Don't you know you're making yourself look desperate? You're look, making yourself look weak. You're making yourself, and, and Bartimaeus is there with, with a beggar's garment on. He's like, how can it get any worse? I do this every day. problem is, is we come in from a Greek perspective. That's like an unbeliever of this world. The influence of this world gets on us. Pride gets on us. Are you with me now? You see what I'm talking about? It gets with us, on us, and we're in the house of the Lord, and Jesus is moving, and we're sitting there, and we're trying to hold it together. We're keeping it together. I'm telling you, you're going to leave the same way that you came. Now, can you imagine if I were in a restaurant, and uh, I, I was eating some chicken, or let's make it even better. Let's say I was eat, meet, meeting some, eating some really fatty ribeye, and I took a big bite and chewed it, and the flavor was so good, I'm like, I got to get this down my throat. It starts down my throat, and it stops right here, all right? So I try to breathe in, 
can't breathe out. Try to push it out, can't push it out. I'm in a desperate situation, right? Now, by nature, I'm somewhat dignified. I try to hold myself together. But if I'm in a situation like that, I'm not going to be like, When I get like that, I don't care if it's dessert time. I don't care if the waiter's trying to take the order. I don't care what's on the agenda. I need to get the attention of somebody who can help me. Somebody needs to understand that Jesus is in the house. You don't need to get up in here and walk out of here and say, we'll save this for another day. Somewhere along the way, like Bartimaeus, you need to say, Jesus, I need you. My family needs you. we got to have revival. Oh, come on, stand to your feet right now. Let's praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. Oh, man. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus. Come on. Come on, stretch your hands right now. Here it comes. Anybody believe that right now in the name of Jesus? Because of the power of your blood and the promises of your word, I speak the name of Jesus over this life. And I pray right now for a miracle of healing. Come upon her, Lord Jesus. You're working right now. Come on, somebody. Jesus is walking by right now. He's here today. I feel his presence in this house. You can sit and watch him go by, or you can say, I need, my family needs a miracle. I need a miracle. Get up here. Come on now, step out of where you are and come up here with your hands uplifted. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. I'm talking about God can give you a revival to your family, individualized revival. Listen to me, the Lord responds right now. Come on, there's some people of faith, people of faith moving into this. We're, we're not just going through the motions right now. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, that, take the hand of that family member right now that needs a miracle. Say, come on. <laughs> come on, don't be afraid. Get up there. Hallelujah. God can give you what you need right now. Bring them. Come on with them. Come on with them. Hallelujah. Bring your faith right now. Bring your faith right now. Jesus, I need you. I'm not going to let my pride or trying to appear like I got it all together stop me from getting what you need. I need revival. My family needs revival. Hallelujah, I need deliverance. I need to walk out of here changed. I need forgiveness. I need to be washed. I need to be cleaned. Come on, he's a miracle working God. Don't be afraid just to let it go. Come on, some of you need to quit worrying about what other people think. And you need to just let it go. Come on, push through it right now. Come on, that's it. Come on, there's a miracle for somebody's marriage right now. I declare it in Jesus' name. There's a miracle for your marriage. If you can get in the presence of the Lord, if I can but touch him, I shall be made whole. Come on, I want you to reach over and pray with somebody around you right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, that's it. Come on, push through. I will not be silenced. My need for him is too great. My need for Jesus is too great. I've got to get his attention right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my daughter. Have mercy, Lord Jesus, on my wife. 
Jesus, touch my body. Push through. Push into the crowd. Push through. Hallelujah. Get to touch him. Today. 
I hear the chains falling. Oh, yes, they are. I hear the chains falling. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. 